So, hi, welcome back to lesson two of our Christmas series. Now, when you think about Christmas, what do you think about? Well, look at the table here. Can you see what I have? I have a whole lot of gifts. We always like getting and receiving gifts at Christmas time, don't we? Well, here's what I want you to do, and this is going to give you a clue as to what our story today is all about. So when I hold up a gift, I'm going to shake it, see if it makes any noise, and you're going to try to guess whether inside this box or any of these boxes are good gifts or not so good gifts, okay? So let's start. Why don't we try the big one first? Okay, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? So what do you think is inside here? It's not making a whole lot of noise. It almost sounds like it's empty. Well, is it a good gift, do you think? Or a not so good gift? Well, let's open and find out. Ah, a bunch of balloons. Is that a good gift? Well, maybe not as good as you were expecting. But if it's your birthday, and it is Jesus' birthday at Christmas, right? It might be an okay gift. Well, let's look at another one. How about this little one? What do you think is inside here? It's making a lot of noise. Woo! Is it a good gift or a not so good gift? What do you think? Shout out what you think. Good? Not good? Let's look. What's in here? Oh, it is a candle that actually, I think, lights up. Let's see. Well, it's supposed to light up. I guess this is not such a good gift, is it? Yeah, what a crummy gift. Doesn't even light up. All right. All right, what about this one? Good gift or not so good? Let it makes a little bit of noise, but not a lot. What do you think's inside? Good gift? Let's find out. Nothing? Wait a second, wait a second. Oh! It is a $5 bill. Is it a good gift or not so good? Well, I think it's pretty good, right? $5 isn't bad. So, how about this box? It's a lot of noise. Is it a good gift or not so good? Oh. Now, if you were here last time, you remember that Mary, a girl from Nazareth, a common girl, was visited by the angel of the Lord who told her that she was going to have a baby. Not just any baby, but a baby who would be the Son of God and the Savior of the world. And that was exciting news. Of course, Mary had questions, but the angel told her it was all the Holy Spirit, God, who was going to do this miracle. But what we didn't tell you the last time was that Mary was engaged to a man called Joseph. And when Joseph heard that Mary was expecting a baby, he had a lot of questions too. But he was visited in a dream with a message from God that said he should marry Mary. 
Mary, Mary. Hmm. And that it was all from the Lord. Now today's lesson begins when a powerful man, a man of authority called Caesar Augustus, he made a law and he said that everybody had to go back to the town they were born in. He was making a list, counting everybody, because he wanted them to pay taxes. He's still paying taxes today, right? So now this was going to be a long journey for Mary and Joseph, because by this time, Mary was very, very close to delivering her baby. This journey took I don't know how long it would take, but it was about 65 to 70 miles away to Bethlehem from Nazareth. Now, if you've ever been on a long journey, you probably went in a car or maybe an airplane or a train or a bus, but they didn't have any of those things in those days. All they had was their feet to walk or animals to ride in. And so now Mary and Joseph had to make the long journey to Bethlehem. Now I want you to stand up just to get an idea of what it might have been like for Mary and Joseph, especially Mary, okay? Stand up on your feet wherever you are, wherever you're sitting. If you're on the couch, get up off that couch because we're going to go on this journey with them, okay? So I want you to stand up and kind of walk in place with me. Okay, and we're just going to keep pretending that we're walking. And if you've got something around you that's maybe a little heavy to, to, to pick up, take that and pick it up and just carry that. Because Mary wasn't just walking, right? Remember, she was carrying this baby with her and she was almost ready to have the baby. So, so she would have had a very hard time. Okay, so we're going to keep, keep moving, keep moving as I begin to tell this story and the journey that Mary and Joseph go on. So here they are, Mary and Joseph, right, at Nazareth. And here is here the road to Bethlehem, okay? Now it doesn't look very far here, but remember, 65 to 70 miles, kind of a long way. So here they go, they're traveling. Now you can imagine the conversation that might have gone on as they were traveling along the road, okay? So Mary was probably getting tired, right? Now just keep, keep walking, keep walking. Are you getting tired yet? I stopped, I stopped. Keep walking, keep walking, keep walking. Keep walking, all right, you getting tired? Well, you know what, I'm gonna let you stop. But that kind of gives you an idea what Mary might have felt, okay? And neither anybody, by any means, traveled the distance they did. So here, you can imagine the conversation that might have gone on. Mary is really tired, right? Now, the Bible doesn't say that Mary was on a donkey, but maybe she was. We always see pictures of that, right? So, I don't know where Joseph would have got a donkey from right then, but maybe he knew somebody. So, here's Mary on a donkey now. Might have been a little easier for her, but don't forget, she's close to delivering the baby. So, here they go. Feeling better, my dear? Oh, Joseph! Well, we're almost there. So they continue on their way. Till they come to ba -da -ba -da, Bethlehem. They finally arrive. But now the problem is finding a place to stay. So they go to place after place, and it has a sign on the door that says, No vacancy. That means there's no more room, I'll fill up. Well, they try place after place after place. And Mary is really getting concerned, and so is Joseph by now, because she's about to deliver the baby. Oh, oh, Joseph, we gotta find a place to stay soon. I know, my dear. Well, it says no vacancy on this door, too. There was an innkeeper at the last place. Here he is. We're gonna call him Joe, okay? Oh, excuse me, sir, but my wife is about to have a baby. 
I know you have no room, but is there anywhere we could stay? Oh, oh, oh. So what does the innkeeper Joe say? Well, uh, I think the only place that uh, I have is a, a stable. Uh, it's a comfortable spot, and uh, your wife will be comfortable there. What do you say, Mary? Well, at this point, anywhere will do. Okay. So, they go to the stable. Now you can imagine what it must have been like in a stable. I mean, I don't know if it was a hot day or not, or a hot evening, but there were a lot of animals in there, and that's where they stayed. And so there was sheep. <laughs> there were cows, maybe, and chickens. Talk about a silent night? Maybe not. Well, that's where Mary had the baby. Not to mention, not only would it maybe have been noisy, but it probably smelled really bad. So everybody hold your nose. Animals. Bad. Well, Mary had the baby, and here she is in the stable, baby Jesus, baby Jesus is born, and Joseph. Baby Jesus is born and he's put in a manger, which is an animal feeding trough. What a place to be born in. So not only were the animals maybe noisy, maybe not, maybe they were sleeping, I don't know, but it was noisy and now baby Jesus was born and you might have heard a baby crying, right? So, noisy time, smelly time. But that's where God planned Jesus to be born in. Not in a mansion, not in a palace, because he was a king, he is a king, but in a lowly stable with animals. Smelly, noisy, who knows? Why did God plan it like that? Because God came to be like one of us, even though he was a king, even though he was the savior of the world, even though he's the son of God, he came to live like us and be with us. That's how much God loves us. And he came as a baby, just like we come into the world. But he came to die on a cross to take my sin and your sin, all the things we do wrong and the punishment we deserve for them. He came so that as a man, he would die on a cross that's an Easter story. But this is the beginning. This is what it's really all about. Jesus came in a stable as a baby for me and for you. And we need to thank God because he is the greatest gift of all. Let's go to our memory verse. Memory verse is taken from Luke 2 verse 7. And she gave birth, who? Mary gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. That's Luke chapter 2, verse 7. Let's try it again. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Luke 2, verse 7. Let's pray. Let's pray and let's thank God for sending Jesus. Father, we thank you so much that you love us enough that you sent your son Jesus to come to earth as a baby. And we are so grateful that you did, that we can have a savior who came to rescue us from our sin. Lord, we thank you for this season of the year when we can be reminded of your coming to the earth. And we just want to worship you and praise you and give you praise and thanks. And so, Lord God, thank you. Thank you for sending Jesus. Amen. Now don't go away because we were talking about gifts earlier and I've got something to show you. I'll be right back. We are back! And we were talking earlier today about what makes a good gift. And we've heard our Bible story today. Now I'm going to do kind of a little bit experiment and you can try this at home maybe. I have three different liquids. I have honey, I have oil, and I have dish soap. You could try maybe another one as well, maybe milk or something. 
But what we're going to do is I'm going to put liquid in these glasses. And each glass, I'm going to do it in a different order. And we're going to discover something. So are you ready? So in glass number one, right here, I'm going to start out by putting honey in it. Okay? Hopefully the honey will come out. So we've got honey in this glass. That's what we first put in. Now we're going to put a little bit of oil in. Okay. And now we're going to put some dish soap. Maybe I should mix it all together as much as I can. Hmm. What I'm seeing here is that even though the dish soap is mixing up, the oil is rising to the top. So don't forget the order of glass number one. There was honey, oil, and dish soap. Now I'm going to put the oil in first in glass number two. Okay. Then I'm going to put the dish soap in. It's not going in too good. And thirdly, or lastly, I'm going to put in the honey. And once again, even though it's a different order, I've got the oil that's rising up to the top. You see, you can see three layers with this actually. All right, so even though it's a different order, the oil is rising to the top. So let's try a different order. Let's put the dish soap in first. Glass number three, dish soap goes in first. Now the honey. And lastly, the oil. What is happening here? Again, the oil is risen to the top. We were talking about what makes a good gift. We talked about the Lord Jesus Christ who was born on Christmas Day, right? In a stable, a lowly stable. And you know what? He was the greatest gift of all. He wasn't a package that you open. He wasn't decorated with bows and ribbons. But no matter what you have in your life as a gift or are given as a gift, the greatest gift will always rise to the top. The greatest gift is Jesus. He will always rise up to the top. No matter what you desire, no matter what you want in a gift, he's gonna, you're going to find that he's the greatest gift that you'll ever receive. Why? Because he came for a purpose. He came to be with me and you. He came as a baby, but he died on the cross to take this punishment for all of our sin that we deserved, and he rose from the dead. If we have him in our life, if we put him first, he's going to rise to the top in our life, and he's going to change our life forever. We want to know what a good gift is. Receive the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll be saved, and he'll change our life. And so until next time, God bless.